Well, good morning, Earthlings. It's about quarter past daylight, and I'm probably about 20 minutes from uh, the job site. It's about a two hour drive every morning from my place, so uh, that's quite a bit of windshield time, you know, and still putting in uh, eight, nine hours in the field in addition to that. Makes kind of a long day. But uh, we've only got about four days down here. I think we'll probably finish this job up on Thursday. So today, I will be cutting down a few trees. Victor uh, cut for a little bit after work yesterday. <laughs> we work after work. <laughs> after we send the crew home, then we, we work some more. But anyway, um, he's got a fair amount knocked down and I will cut down some more just to make sure he has plenty for the next day or two. And then I will cut up some graft wood for him and I will uh, show you that process. In the meantime, y'all have a good one. See ya. This saw was cutting pretty well yesterday, but I fine tuned it a little bit last night. I took my flat file and knocked down these rakes a little bit. And uh, that allows the chain to go deeper in the wood, uh, get a bigger bite with the tooth. And I know this stuff is elementary to most of you people, but uh, you never know. There might be a, a young homeowner that bought his first chainsaw and maybe doesn't know this stuff. And maybe this will help a little bit. And maybe not. But anyway, knock these down a little bit. And then I touched up these teeth just, just a final touch, boy. And it made all the difference in the world, and this thing is cutting today. Boy, it's cutting. And uh, there's a real pleasure in operating a chainsaw that is finely tuned and finely sharpened. Um, I had a guy work for me one time. He worked in the orchard for 20 years or more. And he watched me file a chainsaw one day, and he said, you know what, I thought, he said, I thought I knew how to file a sharpen a saw until I watched you. And uh, what he was doing, and probably a mistake a lot of people make, is because he was, uh, boy, he was really bearing down on that file, you know. But what he was doing, he was grinding off this area down below. But your cutting edge is right up here on top and on this outer corner here. So, so he watched me and I always pull that, pull that file up and make sure that I'm getting the top of that edge. Or the rather the the edge at the top of the, the tooth, I should say. And I don't have this device, so I can't really really uh, show you too well. But uh, but that's the deal. You want to get that top edge really sharp, and uh, you don't do any good pushing down, putting downward pressure on that file. I just grind your tooth away. <laughs> I mean, you'll accidentally hit that a little, but if you're conscious of it and aware. Of, uh, of that top uh, edge, you can do a better job. And uh, oh, I want you to watch this thing cut when I start back up. I'm going to set you up out here and let you see how uh, it eats the wood, boy. It chews it up and it's spitting out. Uh, it's spitting out. It's spitting out chips uh, the size of nickels. Well, maybe not quite. That might be a little exaggeration, but uh, some of you saw guys will know what I'm talking about. It's throwing big chips and not fine sawdust. If it's throwing fine sawdust, you're, you're changed all. And uh, you want it to throw these big chips. And I always joke and say, yeah, it's throwing chips an inch long, you know. But some of you guys know my, uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Cossett down in Oregon. He knows all about that. And my friend Troy Tree Guy, he knows all about that. He knows how to sharpen the saw, and make them eat wood. So I'm gonna set you up over here and fire this thing up and get back at it. I don't want Victor to fire me on my second day on the job. Oh! <laughs> 
little bit of wind out here and I hope it doesn't mess up my video I uh, tomorrow I'll bring the my microphone with the wind sock when you're collecting sign wood for apple grafting you want one year sucker growth well you always want one year sucker growth regardless of the variety but this small wood pencil sized wood is just fine even even smaller wood is fine for apples. Uh, you can see how little that is. And that's okay. But now cherries, cherry graft wood, a whole different story. And I'm going to set you up over here and show you a little bit about that. Now with cherry graft wood, you want the larger wood. This is about half inch or so. And I can tell, I've been doing this long enough that I can tell by the feel of it. Uh, what's good wood and what isn't. When this gets rubbery and soft, then I know if you cut into it, it's going to have a pithy center. You can see that. Uh, and that's not good. What you want is good solid hardwood like that. It doesn't have that pithy center. And, uh, the reason for that is you have to have enough stored carbohydrates to have this heal into the tree and not only heal into the tree but to grow push the bud as well now normally uh, all that has to happen is this piece of wood has to have enough stored carbohydrates to force the bud just to push the bud now we're asking a lot of it when we start grafting so now we're asking it to heal into the tree uh, to callus in and form a union and also uh, to differentiate cells into vascular cells uh, there are uh, undifferentiated cells which are just healing cells or callusing tissue and then uh, they differentiate into vascular cells when you do the graft, when you form the graft union. Vascular meaning veins, which feeds the nutrients, the stored carbohydrates into the bud. Uh, so now we're asking it to heal in on the bottom, plus have enough reserve to force the bud once it's healed in and begins to take up nutrients from the root system. So uh, that's asking a lot of this little piece of wood. So it has to be good, solid, and very dormant wood. You cannot have any bud swell, no little green tips on the buds. You don't want a pushing at all. It's called pushing. You don't want any push on the buds. So we take a little bit off the end to get rid of that little whatever dieback there might be there, dried out on the end, and make a fresh cut. Now this is getting soft and rubbery, and I know that's no good, so we won't use that. Now you can go out and do your, your very best work uh, precision cuts, match the cambium perfectly, and it's all for naught if you don't have the correct graft wood. So I have become the go-to guy here in the state for grafting cherries because everybody says cherries are tough or well, they're hard to graft. Well, they're tough if you don't know how to do them. Um, but over 30 plus years We've kind of figured out a few common denominators, and they are to graft trees and cherries when they're young, about 10 years or younger. Um, use this big, hard sign wood. This is uh, way larger than you would use on apples, and, and uh, also graft them early in the season. You know, this is February. We're grafting already. A lot of people think you can't graft until late for May. But you want to graft cherries early before the sap starts to flow. If, uh, if the bark's slipping, the sap's flowing and the bark's slipping, when you graft cherries, you're about a month too late. Uh, so you got to do them before the bark slips. Now there's there's one grafter here in the state that what barks graft cherries, and and they don't do very well, and uh, that's why. Just grafting them way too late. He does a bark graft because he doesn't know how to do these other techniques. And he's a good guy, a nice guy, and a good grafter uh, for apples. But he doesn't do real well, doesn't have very good luck with grafting cherries. And that's why. Either grafting too late, well, 
and plus not using the right kind of wood. So you got to have the correct wood, you got to graft them at the right time. I can just tell by feeling that, I know that's not a good piece of wood. That's not a viable sign. And, and although this is a bigger one, it's getting kind of rubbery. You can have big wood that's soft and, and little wood that's okay. There's a good piece of wood, but it's hardened off. You have to collect this wood in the wintertime when it's fully dormant. Wait till spring, once that bud's triggered, if you see a little green tip on those buds and it's already triggered and it's not going to slow down, it's going to use all this stored energy to force that bud and then it's spent. It has no energy to heal in on the bottom, which we need it to do when we make the graph. Now when you make a cut on a tree, when they're printing and making cuts, the tree will heal itself. And that's what's happened right here. When I talk about undifferentiated cells, that's this tissue that's built up right here. Let me get a, let me get a point and stick here. That's called a calcing ring, a calcing tissue. And it heals itself up so that, that uh, wound does not start to, to die and rot and and die back into the tree. So it formed this callusing ring here. This is undifferentiated cells. Now when we're grafting, we're, we're, uh, we're looking for something else. We want some of these cells to differentiate into vascular cells, which will feed the nutrients from the root system up through the graft union and into the scion and push the bud. Well, old Victor's covering some ground. He and Jorge can graft uh, up and back in about an hour. And that's uh, about 160 trees and four grafts each. So he's thinking, uh, he's shooting for 10 rows today, which would be about uh, oh, 800 trees plus. Uh, so. 3,200 grafts. And he'll probably do a little bit more than that. He can do that in seven hours. Uh, yesterday they turned these guys loose and they uh, these guys work for the ranch. And uh, what happens is I just uh, hire them or the, or the, the ranch people uh, let these guys work for me to get the grafting done, to do the, the support labor, the taping and painting and then I just take it off the bill, whatever that cost, whatever the loaded cost is for these guys, I just trade it out in trees. So it's a real clean way to do it, and then I don't have to uh, haul people for two hours and pay travel time. So uh, if we cut them loose a little bit early, they can go right back to pruning or whatever they're doing here on the ranch, and then uh, we can do some chainsaw work and, and wood prep for tomorrow but I, I'm going to do the wood prep now before I leave. I do have to go meet a client later, but I'm going to cut this wood up so Victor has plenty of wood and he won't have to stop. He can graft right on up until 4 o'clock. Look at Victor's suit. <laughs> I told him he looked like a big fat bear, that suit. And he said, have you ever seen a skinny bear? <laughs> Let me see you climb a tree, Victor. Let me see you go climb a tree like a bear. <laughs> oh, Greetings, Earthlings. You know, <laughs> we were trying to avoid the hospital this year, <laughs> but um, I went to bed last night. I was probably in bed by nine o'clock, pretty hammered from that chainsaw work. 
and um, got a phone call at 11.50 and it was Victor and he's out in his little apartment unit out in the shop and said I need to go to the hospital.